All right, hello everybody. Let me turn this down. Or at least off. Um, this is pretty much the final product of the brocade. It's a design based off of the barcade. If you just basically Google barcade, you'll uh, you'll find something very similar to this. Although it's highly modified, you just sort of base your ideas off of the arcade cabinet I find when you're building arcade cabinets and then just sort of just go your own way. Um, this is more or less the final product. Last time I showed you it was um, not very aesthetically pleasing but very functional. This is the um, aesthetic and functional version. So in this one basically what I've done is I've obviously painted it, which you can see, um, just matte black. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to really tell, but I haven't done laminate yet. That's something that I do want to do, but it might, I might hold off. I don't know. It looks pretty good without the laminate, to be honest. Um, I've done the T-molding. This is all red T-molding. You can buy this online. It falls all the way down here, around the control deck. Um, it's missing two spots, here and over on the other side, but those aren't so noticeable. I just sort of ran out of T-molding. It's, it's on order, but... Those, you just quickly slot the T-molding in there. The, the slots are already cut with the router. Um, the, the plexiglass is done. This is all plexiglass, and it's matted, painted black. I matted it so that you can actually see the monitor, and it gives like a nice glossy um, look to the arcade. It looks like, like an actual arcade now, not just a monitor sitting in there, because the, the LCD monitor gives it a really flat look, um, and the... the um, the plexiglass in front of it gives it that glossy, that high, almost colorized look. Uh, a lot that, kind of like what you would get at a CRT, but still a little bit different. If you look at an angle, you can still kind of, I don't know if you'll see it in there, you can still kind of see the monitor. Yeah, you can see the Dell logo there, the monitor. But when you look on it head on, um, it looks perfect. It's like perfectly aligned. There's um, little holes that I've drilled into the plexiglass. There's one right here. You can maybe see it, barely see it. There's another one up here, depending on the monitor orientation. So if you ever need to, if the monitor ever turns off for whatever reason, which is very unlikely, you can just sort of stick a pin in there and it lines exactly up with the power button and you just sort of pin it in and power, you push the power button. Otherwise you have to take the whole thing apart. It's kind of a pain in the ass or take the plexiglass out and it's it's really snug in there. Sanding down plexiglass is a pain. Um, on the top here you can see custom made grills. This my buddy printed on his 3D printer. You can see the I, I made a I call this the brocade because a whole bunch of people helped me with it. But you can see the brocade logo here. It's a little B. Um, and behind it are two 80 millimeter fans to push air out. Um, the inlet door works very nicely. Um, you can see all the components in there. It's been, it's basically running uh, a Dell, just a crappy Dell machine. And uh, two gigs of RAM though, I found I needed that. The power button's up here, that's the power button, in case you were wondering. Um, just a shitty power supply. Um, and the SATA drive is actually underneath the control deck, which runs Windows XP. And the front end is called GameX. The only thing currently that I'd still want to change is obviously the speakers. The speakers probably shouldn't be external. It's just I tried taking these speakers apart to find out a way if I can mount them up here in the, the sort of banner or the marquee, depends what you want to call it. Um, and, and I couldn't really get them taken apart in a way that I could mount them, so I might have to get different speakers. Um, and then, of course, finish some of the T-molding here and do some laminate and then also get a wireless card for the actual PC so I don't have to plug in Ethernet. So for those who didn't see the first video, this is running GameX, if it turns on. I think it went into sleep or something. I don't know what happened. <laughs> oh, there it is. Um, and it's got a really cool sort of ambient sound going on in the background, so if you got it running, people really know it's running. Right now it's just running MAME, um, and Sorry for the glare, but it looks really good in person. You just get a lot of glare here. Um, and you can see sort of all the games in here. You can set favorites, which are some of mine and my wife's favorites. Um, of course, last played. It also categorizes things. You can hook up other emulators to GameX as well. 
but mainly um, I wanted to I wanted this cabinet just to be a single player vertical cabinet, mainly for scrolling shooters um, like the 1945 series, uh, the uh, the Gunbird series, and then of course for the classics like uh, like Bubble Bobble, uh, Pac Man, uh, Burger Time runs really well on a vertical monitor. The the horizontal games like the uh, like the classic Street Fighters. I even have Contra here as a favorite. Um, or actually, sorry, Contra is vertical. I forgot that. Um, like the Street Fighters, they run pretty well, but it's just sort of uh, letterboxed, like you would normally expect. Um, the control deck underneath, I can show you. That's it underneath. You can see the SATA drive sitting there. Um, right on top here is an iPack. It's actually a 32-port iPack. What that basically does is it allows you to hook up these hat buttons and the joystick, which is just basically a set of four hat buttons, um, and plug them into inputs into the iPack. And the iPack is just essentially a keyboard emulator. It is, it is a keyboard. The PC detects it as a keyboard. So um, when you push up on the joystick, it's actually um, you know keyboard up, and then keyboard down, keyboard you know, left and right. And then some of these buttons, some of them are bound to A, some of them are bound to B, Z, X, whatever, V. Um, and they all translate very well to the MAME emulator. So just to give you an idea here, let's load up some Contra. Oops, sorry, I should have been showing you. Play game. Let's turn on the sound just a little bit. Hopefully I don't drown myself out. I turn the thing in backwards. The coin op button is down here. So you just sort of push the coin button, get some coins. One or two players, but it's just one player. Um, Start button's up at the top, and there you go, we got Contra. I'm going to be playing this with one hand, so I apologize. But as you can see, it's very responsive. Like That's how responsive it is. Um, oh, I died. Anyway, so you get the idea. And then these three buttons together bring you back to GameX which is a pretty sweet system. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment on this video. Here, I'll turn this down again, sorry. Um, feel free to comment. Feel free to send all your questions and concerns. Uh, again, if you want to build your own, I, I literally, when I started this project a couple months ago, I had no woodworking experience, none, zero. Um, and I had no idea what I was gonna do. I had no experience building arcade cabinets and what I've basically learned from this project is there is no excuse anymore for ignorance. You can pretty much Google anything, find tutorials for anything, and uh, essentially just make whatever you want. I've always wanted to make an arcade cabinet, so I made it happen, and I plan on making a lot more. My next project is probably going to be a two-player cabinet, a uh, much longer control deck, um, and it's going to be a horizontal uh, horizontal cab so you can play those classic fighters um, so thanks for watching again if you have any comments concerns whatever questions let me know and I will be sure to answer them see you guys next time